A black monster with four wings sitting on a tree looks at a brown boar that is on the ground. He attacks the boar and blood flows from it. The black monster turns back. A man with a sword runs towards the monster and shouts, Here. Behind him are a man in green clothes and a girl in blue clothes running with a fireball in their hands. A blonde man with a sword and a magician girl are standing on the corpse of a monster. There are four more heroes around them. The audience looks at the screen enthusiastically and raises their hands. One of them shouts that they have finally destroyed the S-Class monster, the giant mantis. Another spectator shouts that everything is happening as expected from the heavenly knights. Another spectator shouts that the master is so handsome. A man with gray hair and glasses says that the game is finally balanced. As you already understood, this game is large scale, but unlike other games, the entire world is recreated in it. The blonde man with the sword and the rest of the heroes emerge from the portal. The holographic screens show a portal in the middle of the desert, one portal in the middle of the city, one portal in the air, and a portal on a hill. Twenty years ago, countless portals suddenly appeared all over the world. They lead to worlds teeming with various creatures. They were called jungles. After a series of studies of these worlds, people found out that the jungle, although dangerous, cannot interact with our world. A man with red hair and massive shoulder pads stands with a sword on his belt. In other words, neither magical items nor power gained in the jungle can pass through the portal. A man in business clothes has his hands together. Behind him there are three more images of men in business clothes. The most interesting thing is that the technology company Shenchuan has declared its rights to the jungle. Using technology, they turn the worlds into an interactive game called Apocalypse Survival. Five heroes stand with smiles on their faces. The black-haired man raises his hand with a sword, and the girl raises her hand with a staff. Survival in the Apocalypse The player who passes through the portal becomes a knight who must survive in this world. Three knights are running somewhere with smiles on their faces. However, there is one thing, players in the jungle may die. Therefore, it is played by those who are bored with the usual routine. They come here to experience something new. A fiery ray emanates from the mouth of the black dragon which is directed towards the knights. Now, most of the world's population has visited other worlds. Some rich people even hired brave men to live in another world. Blue energy circulates near the castle. This is no longer a game, but a whole work of art. The gray-haired man smiles a little, and most of his face is covered by shadow. This is Ling Tian, one of its creators. Someone wearing shoes opens the door and enters the room. A blonde man in a red shirt with documents in his hands walks among many people. He throws the documents at Ling Tian and asks why the Mantis monster's data was changed and if he did it. Liu Dealong, the scion of a high-ranking executive at the Shenchuan Technology Company, is also a high-level warrior in the game. He adjusts his jacket and says that this adjustment was not approved by management, and then asks who issued the permit. The protagonist rubs his nose and says that this is all for the sake of game balance, and the values he initially set are different from the current ones. He adds that this can make the game uncontrollable. The blonde extends his hand towards the protagonist. He grabs him by the shirt and asks him since when has he been dictating the rules here. He adds that the protagonist needs to remember that only the company can give any instructions, and he just has to follow them. The protagonist removes the villain's hand from himself and with a serious expression on his face tells him that he is responsible for all game content. He adds that he has already changed the monster's parameters and is afraid that if he returns the original data, everything will be covered. Liu Dealong says with a serious expression that in this case he will have to take action. The blonde man looks at the man with brown hair and shouts that now they have to fix everything. He adds that he wants to see the results he strives for and therefore no one will leave here until he gets them. The man with glasses tells the protagonist that he told him not to make random edits and just listen to his superiors. The girl in the white shirt asks if this guy really thinks he's the boss here and just added trouble. Liu Dealong tells Ling Tian that if he is against it, he can write a letter of resignation. The protagonist, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, thought that these people did not have the goal of making a game that everyone would like. Someone reaches his hand towards the protagonist's hand and shouts, Chief. A black-haired girl with red eyes tells the protagonist, Don't get excited. The protagonist calls the girl Liu Yu, after which she turns her head slightly. The protagonist imagines four men armed with clubs coming at him and says that in reality he is deeply in debt for millions of dollars and is afraid that if he loses this job, the collectors will beat him to death and leave him to die on the street. He adds that he realized something and then wonders if it's safe to stay here and so he needs to think about it. The blonde pushes the protagonist. The blonde man with an angry expression tells the protagonist that he should know his place and do only what is asked of him and not the other way around. 
The protagonist and Luo Yu are sitting on a bench under a secura tree. The girl thanks the protagonist for the advice and then adds that she finally understood what the problem was. The protagonist looks at the girl's laptop and tells her that there is nothing wrong with her design. He just made a few edits. A black-haired girl with reddened cheeks tells the protagonist not to talk like that because if it weren't for his help, she wouldn't be able to last in the company. She adds that she is very grateful to him. The girl closes the laptop and tells the protagonist that, however, the way he argues with management makes her sad and therefore she is worried that they will do something bad to him. She adds that there were rumors that their company was using the jungle to get rid of competitors, so it is dangerous to mess with them. The protagonist looks down and says that he will figure this out somehow. Liu Yu stands in front of the protagonist and tells him that it's good that he understands, and then informs him that then she will return to work. The protagonist says that Liu Yu is the only one in the company he can talk to. His cheeks are red and he says that she is his only ray of light in this dark world, so he cannot let her go. He turns to the girl. She turns around and asks, what is it, boss? The main character approaches her and says that this company and even the world may be facing big changes, so she should take care of herself. The girl looks at the protagonist and calls him boss. The main character clenches his hand into a fist and tells the girl not to worry, because he will do everything in his power to protect her. Luo Yu kisses the protagonist on the cheek. She waves her hand at the protagonist and tells him that she believes in him and she is sure that he can do it. The black-haired girl winks at the protagonist. The protagonist, with a serious expression on his face, says that the secret he accidentally discovered of this company, which could change the whole world, only reminded him of something. He looks at the multi-story buildings and says that leaving the company will not only lead to the fact that he will be pursued by collectors, but also to the fact that it will be easier for the company to kill him, because he has fallen into a hole from which he cannot get out. He adds that sooner or later they will begin to act and therefore he needs to be prepared. A group of people sits at a round table. There are blue holograms in the middle. One of the holograms says that everyone has gathered and then the 76th meeting on the Shenchuan project officially begins. The mustachioed hologram says that Red Division has discovered that the jungle is expanding and he fears that they are close to something big. He adds that, however, there is still no sign of the desired Lord of the Jungle. The blonde leans his head on his hand and says that Ling Tian, who is in charge of developing the game, always rejects the ideas they propose. He adds that he thinks he might have seen something. The black-haired girl with a serious expression on her face says that yes, he already knows about the secret of the jungle. The mustachioed man tells the girl that this is a secret that can turn the world upside down. He adds that people like him should not know about him. They need to kill him before he has time to prepare. The mustachioed hologram says that he remembered Ling Tian and that he is a very talented developer. He reports that in order to get him to work for the company, they had to go to great lengths and drag his family into huge debts. He adds that it was Liu Daolong's idea and since he has become a problem for them, let his knights take care of him. He asks his subordinate to simply kill him in the jungle. The blonde man with a gloomy expression says that he has been waiting for this day for a long time. Jungle, someone among the trees makes many blows and an explosion occurs. The protagonist is dressed in armor and holds a spear in his hand. The bodies of knights lie on the ground around him, and Luo Yu stands behind him. Liu Daolong asks what kind of pathetic pair this is, and then says that he could not even imagine that the protagonist would use his gaming privileges to collect such equipment for himself. He adds that just think, the protagonist defeated so many knights. The blonde man with blood on his face says that if it weren't for Luo Yu, which glows at every step, it would be very difficult for him to find him. He asks the protagonist when he started preparing and is it really after he found out about the secret. With a malicious smile, he asks the protagonist whether he really assumed from the very beginning that sooner or later they would get rid of him. He smiles widely and says that although it doesn't matter anymore. Blood pours from the protagonist's mouth. Luo Yu attacked the protagonist from behind. The main character falls to the ground and asks her why she did it. The protagonist reveals that 10 years ago, after research conducted by the technology company Shenchuan, the jungle was identified as being outside the real world. Among the high mountains there is a lot of vegetation. The protagonist reports that people could coexist peacefully with them. He says that, in fact, the jungle is growing quietly, and in 10 years it can completely engulf the earth. Near a high-rise building overgrown with plants there is a portal near which people walk. The protagonist says that this means that in the future all humanity will have to survive in the jungle. The main character reveals that he is Ling Tian, a game designer responsible for turning the jungle into a game suitable for human habitation. 
He lies on the ground with blood on his face and says that although the higher management tried their best to hide the true state of affairs, he still found out about their plan. Around him lie the corpses of other knights. The main character says that he knew and understood that sooner or later they would silence him, so he began to prepare in advance. He adds that everything went the way he wanted, but he could not even think that the only person he trusted would betray him. Luo Yu, with an indifferent expression on his face, asks the protagonist if he still doesn't understand, and then adds that from the very beginning, his life was clearly planned out, starting with the death of his parents and ending with the huge debt of the company. The girl smiles maliciously and tells the protagonist that this is all thanks to his amazing talent for developing games. She adds that the company had to develop a plan, and she was the final guarantor of this plan, so if he wants to blame her, then let him speak. She leans over the protagonist and tells him that he was such an outstanding person. The protagonist with a desperate expression on his face wants to ask the girl why she did this, but he is interrupted. The blonde goes to the protagonist and says that stop chatting, because their mission is simply to kill him, although, apparently, they will not have to do it themselves. Liu Daelong smiles maliciously and says let's just leave him here. A skeleton and other monsters peek out from behind the bushes. The blonde man and the girl enter the portal. Liu Daelong says that he will be eaten by monsters created by himself. Many monsters bent over the protagonist. The monsters open their mouths. A red system notification appears, where it says that a threat to the owner's life has been detected and the jungle system is activated. A red system window appears, where it says that the identification of the Lord of the Jungle is taking place. According to another notification, the download was completed successfully. In the last window of the system it is written that the protagonist is a level 1 alien mantis. Active skill, flash. Passive skill, jungle instinct. A bright red glow emanates from the protagonist. A red interface is visible in his eyes, and his clawed hand no longer looks human. The protagonist asks if it really worked. The protagonist looks at his transformed hand. He says great, he managed to mislead the company management. He adds that they really thought that armor was the only trump card. He smiles maliciously and says that this is his real trump card. The protagonist says that research has shown that originally a powerful creature lived in the jungle, the Lord of the Jungle. The protagonist and several other men examine the stone on which the symbol is located. Ling Tian says that even though he disappeared a long time ago, there is documentary evidence showing how much he was feared by all races. A monster with six legs is painted on the stone. Luo Yu points his hand at the image on the screen and says that according to research, when high-class beings die in the jungle, their energy continues to exist in one form or another. The protagonist stands next to her, and opposite them is Liu Daelong, who says that this is a potential danger for survival in the apocalypse. The blonde with a dissatisfied expression on his face says that he will find a solution to this problem, find all the threats and eliminate them as soon as possible. The main character scratches his nose and says that there is currently no information about this, but if something is discovered, he will provide a report. The protagonist with wings and clawed paws says that this is the real path to salvation, which he saved for himself. He adds that this is the power of the Lord of the Jungle that they have been looking for so long and something that corresponds to this power. A red system window begins to form in front of the protagonist. The inscription jungle system appears in front of the protagonist. The inscription is replaced by a red system window, where it is written about the system mission, survival. According to the description, the protagonist's presence attracted the attention of the jungle monsters. He is about to be attacked and so his task is to survive while being hunted by jungle monsters. The reward for completing this task is 1000 jungle points. The protagonist looks out the system window and says that the enemies are already here. He adds that this is a dark forest, so the monsters that live here are spectral wolves. A wolf with a flaming top of its head opens its mouth and heads towards the protagonist. The protagonist quickly flies away from the wolf using his wings. He smiles widely and says that thanks to the passive skill jungle instinct, he can sense someone else's presence and react quickly. A system notification appears with information about the level 1 spectral wolf. According to the description, he lives in the jungle. Average fighting strength, usually like to hunt in packs. Five spectral wolves emerge from the shadows. The protagonist looks at the enemies and says that fortunately, these are low-level monsters that he can easily deal with. He adds that he also has offensive skills. The protagonist quickly moved towards the wolf. He hit the enemy using the flash skill. He pushes himself from one tree to another and says that jungle instinct has doubled his senses and flash has increased his mobility. With the help of his clawed hands, he caught onto a tree and thought that the combination turned out to be very successful. 
He looks at the wolves with a smile on his face and thought that his skills were combined with his knowledge of the jungle. The wolf steps on the plant. A green plant emerges from the ground. A huge carnivorous flower opens its mouth and heads towards the wolf. Man-eating flower. Without external influence, it remains in a state of deep sleep, but if you step on it, it will be very difficult to get out. The main character makes a lightning strike with his claws on the wolf and the plant. He moves among the other wolves and says that it wasn't that difficult to deal with them. The protagonist defeats all the wolves and says what he thinks, that's all. He adds that his stamina is almost exhausted, but he has advanced to the third level. The protagonist wipes the blood from his face and says that he feels more at home in the jungle than in human society. He looks at the defeated monsters and says that the system has not yet notified him of the completion of the mission, and then wonders if anyone is still left. The main character feels flows of energy behind him. A huge spectral wolf attacks the main character from behind. A system notification appears with information that this is a level 6 spectral wolf leader. A huge spectral wolf towers over the protagonist. The main character says that as far as he remembers, the probability of a low-level monster lord appearing here is less than 1%. He adds that he cannot believe that he encountered such a thing. The protagonist, with a surprised expression on his face, says that the difference in level between them is so great that he feels pressure just by standing here. The wolf tries to bite the protagonist, but he dodges the attack. The main character lands on the ground and says that his stamina is almost at its limit. The spectral wolf quickly moves towards the protagonist. He scratches the main character's chest with his paw. The protagonist falls to the ground and says, how fast. The spectral leader wolf opens its mouth and jumped on the main character, pointing its paw at him. The protagonist defends against the monster's attack by crossing his arms. He grits his teeth and wonders if he's going to die here, and then says no, he can't do that. The protagonist trembles looking at the enemy and says that he survived all the company's attempts to kill him and he must take revenge on those who manipulated his life. He adds that he must especially take revenge on this woman, Luo Yu. He remembers the image of a black-haired girl with an indifferent look. The protagonist remembers how he and the girl were sitting on a bench. The girl tells the boss that he has studied the structure of the game, but it seems that he still makes some mistakes. The protagonist asks her how this can happen. He gives a thumbs up and says that's what makes Jungle so unique, and then says that it's not like the games they've made in the past. He adds that the system must take into account more possibilities than just following a given formula, because the jungle is alive. He trembles and says that yes, the jungle is alive and therefore he cannot predict everything that will happen. Like for example he could not predict the betrayal of Liu Yu in the sudden appearance of the leader of the spectral wolves. The protagonist with an angry expression on his face exclaims that he will simply do it, because he must live, and this is the only way to take revenge. He moves his wings. He pushes off the ground. He attacks the wolf with his clawed hand. The main character quickly jumped away from the leader of the spectral wolves. The spectral wolf looks at the protagonist and uses the blood trail skill. Streams of red energy are directed towards the main character. The main character jumps from one tree to another and says that the leader of the spectral wolves of the sixth level has the ability to track by blood. He adds that it is impossible to avoid his surveillance by simply running away. He imagines yellow-orange flowers and says that man-eating flowers, exploding berries, toxic mushrooms are useless because they will not work against such a monster. He imagines spherical purple plants. He imagines a mushroom with a red cap and then wonders what he should do in such a situation. The protagonist flies up to the tree and notices that it is large and can be useful to him. He exclaims that there is a way out and here it is. The main character flies upward. He grabbed the tree with his claws. He smiles smugly. The spectral wolf comes closer and closer to the protagonist. The protagonist says that in this forest you can find not only spectral wolves. The leader of the level 7 stalagmite bears appears. He opens his mouth. The protagonist quickly climbs higher up the tree. He jumped onto the branch of a tree. The bear and the leader of the spectral wolves run up to the tree. The main character says that the battle was intense and that he can finally breathe a sigh of relief. The bear grabs the wolf by his mouth. The protagonist says that he needs to get out of here as quickly as possible while they are fighting each other. A triangular symbol with an exclamation mark appears in front of the protagonist. A red system window appears in front of the protagonist. He wonders if he will fail the mission if he escapes, and then says that he was so focused on escaping that he almost forgot about the mission. He adds that his presence attracted the attention of the jungle monsters. Ling Tian says that this stalagmite bear was provoked by his actions so it should not be included in the mission. Then only the leader of the spectral wolves remains. He looks at the fighting animals and says that he just needs to wait a while. 
he says that a level 7 stalagmite bear should definitely be stronger. He adds that killing the leader of the spectral wolves will not take much time. A red system window appears, where it is written that the survival mission is completed and therefore the protagonist is congratulated on completing the task, as a result of which the skill panel is activated. System reward, 1000 jungle points. An inscription appears stating that skills can be improved using jungle points. The protagonist says that as he thought, his mission ended as soon as the leader of the spectral wolves died. A wolf scratched by a bear lies on the ground. The main character sits on a tree branch and looks out the system window. He says that in addition to the jungle points, the skill bar has been activated. The protagonist has several general sea level skills. Poison for 400 jungle points, use poison when attacking. Stealth for 600 jungle points, use the jungle environment to become invisible. Flight for 600 jungle points, grow wings and fly at high speed. The protagonist also has advanced level C skills. Monster will for 1000 jungle points, activate the will of the lord of the jungle, gain strength beyond your capabilities, intimidate other monsters. However, as the effect of the skill increases, you will gradually lose your own will. This is a risky skill and should be approached with caution. Level B, A, S skills are inactive. The system store is not activated. The jungle's current score is 1000. The protagonist says that he must find a safe place and study it carefully. A bear climbs a tree. The protagonist gets to his feet. He clenched his teeth and said that he couldn't cope with this guy now. He needed to run away. Stalagmites are directed at the protagonist, destroying the tree branch. The protagonist jumps down. Stalagmites damage the wings of the main character. The protagonist jumps from one tree to another. Stalagmites rush towards the protagonist, some of which fall into him. He screams that this damn bear is not going to let him go. He adds that he can't stand it anymore, because one blow will be the end for him. He opens the system window and says that this is bad, because it looks like he will have to choose one of these skills. The protagonist says that this bear is a lot more trouble than he thought, since poisonous attacks are unlikely to take him down, and he is afraid that escaping from him using stealth is impossible due to his perception of the earth attribute. Stalagmites form behind the bear and fly towards the protagonist. The protagonist says that unfortunately, he only has enough points to activate two skills. He says as for the flying skill, although it is useless in a real battle, now it can help him escape, but that damn bear just cut off his wings. The protagonist with a dissatisfied expression on his face says that it will take time to restore them and it is obvious that in this situation he will not be able to fly. The bear throws stalagmites at the tree, after which it breaks. The protagonist goes to the bear and says that he can't do anything about it and there's only one thing left to do. He clicks on the button in the system window where it says will of the monster. A red system notification appears in front of the protagonist, where it is written that the training was successful, and he has mastered the will of the monster skill. A blade extends from the hand of the protagonist flying towards the bear. In the background there is a large moon, and below it is a bear. He jumped away from the bear's head. The protagonist attacks the bear while jumping. He makes a huge number of strikes at the bear. The main character lands on the ground. He used the flash skill. The defeated bear falls to the ground. Ling Tian says that the problem is finally solved. Pain rushes through the protagonist's body as if he is being struck by electricity. The main character falls to his knees. He is holding his head. An image of a huge insect appears behind him and he thought that this could be the remnants of the consciousness of the Lord of the Jungle. Shen Chuan Technology Company In the middle of the city stands a huge building that tapers towards its top. Liu Dailong and Liu Yu stand in front of the holograms. The blonde puts his hands out to the sides and tells the holograms that they left Ling Tian to die in the jungle and now Liu Yu will officially take this post and will be responsible for developing survival in the apocalypse. One of the holograms tells the black-haired girl that she hopes he won't let them down, and then asks her if she has any news about the Lord of the Jungle. The black-haired girl says that past research has shown that historically, high-level monsters in the jungle were called masters and can be killed, but their will and strength remain the same. In the background there is a monster with wings and four legs. The girl reports that strength and will be inherited through something like reincarnation. It shows a diagram of where the process of inheritance from monster to human occurs. The girl says that at the same time, the heir has the risk of submitting to the will of the monster. The hologram says what it means, this power is quite dangerous. The girl replies that yes, if you do not have more powerful spiritual power, then you will be swallowed up, even if you are superior in physical strength. 
The hologram says that in any case, if people want to enter the jungle, they must control their own powers. He tells his subordinates that big risks can lead to good rewards. The black-haired girl leans on the table and says that she will definitely find the power of the Lord of the Jungle for company. A glow passes through the tree. The protagonist trembles and asks if this is the remaining consciousness of the Lord of the Jungle. The protagonist grabs the ground. He says that it is tearing into his mind and if he loses, he may cease to be human. Stalagmites are flying towards the protagonist. The top layer of the protagonist's skin is destroyed. He says that he cannot lose because he must live to take revenge on them. The protagonist sits on his knees and his ghostly image appears above him. The ghostly images of the protagonist and the monster are separated. Two streams of energy circulate and swirl above the protagonist. There is a lot of smoke coming from the main character. The smoke is getting less and less. The main character's head now looks human. He wipes the blood from his face and says that he is finally free of the side effects. He adds that this skill has amazing destructive power, but it causes great damage to the psyche. He looks down and says that although it is still a monster's body, it has great human characteristics, supporting the will of a person. He says that he thinks we need to find a way to start Alina's butterfly elf program in order to turn into a full-fledged monster in the future. He imagines a butterfly fairy with white hair spreading her arms to the sides. The main character says that Alina's butterfly elves are a race of jungle elves endowed with light abilities and excellent support skills. A fairy flies over many flowers. The protagonist remembers standing on a small stage and telling the people in front of him that they were not very powerful and had almost no effect on the game. Liu Daelong, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, props his face with his hand and says that, besides, entering their world, the Valley of the Labyrinths is very dangerous, and then asks why waste time on them, because they have more important things to do. The protagonist, with a serious expression on his face, says that there are very few creatures in the game that can serve as NPC guides, and they are ideal. The blonde removes his hand from his face and then replies that, however, this is not necessary. The hologram with a mustache and beard says stop arguing, and then says that Ling Tian is responsible, it's up to him to decide. He tells Liu Daelong that he has always been in charge of combat intelligence, so if he doesn't want to, then he should entrust it to someone else. The blonde puts his hand forward and says that then let Liu Feng from the second squad do it. He adds that he will like this. The protagonist rests his hands on the ground and says that the power of Alina's butterfly elves can strengthen his spiritual power, and if they successfully enter into a contract, then his monster will have no limits. The protagonist gets to his feet and says that earlier he wanted to use the power of the company to open an entrance to them. He adds that now Alina's butterfly elf program has been transferred to Liu Feng from the second squad. The main character made a serious expression and said that it was a pity that Liu Daelong did not take this task seriously, and refused. He remembers a muscular man with an axe and says that if he remembers correctly, in the same detachment there was one of the guys who often climbed on him. The protagonist props up his chin and thinks about what he needs if he wants to deal with them. He opens a red system window and says that you need to find a way to unlock general skills first. The system window contains information about the main mission Defend the Jungle. According to the description, as the Lord of the Jungle, the protagonist must fulfill his duty, drive out the outsiders and protect the various clans. This is a long-term task divided into several sub-tasks. Rewards for completing the entire task, activating B-Rank Skill Bar, Unlocking Monster Mode, Daily Quest, Be Friendly and Help the Weak Mushroom Clan Repair Their Fortifications and Gain Their Favor. Reward for completing the task, 50 jungle points. Daily quest, increase your reputation and mediate a dispute between the spider lair and the cave of dry bones to show your authority as lord of the jungle. Reward for completing the task, 100 jungle points. The main character, sitting, reads the contents of the system window and says that this time the task is even divided into main and additional ones. He adds that some tasks are simple, but the rewards are so small. He says that the rewards are based on the ease of the task and the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So unlocking monster mode as a reward for completing the main task sounds interesting. The main character stands up and says that first he will complete a couple of daily ones and unlock a couple of vital skills. Ling Tian helped the mushroom clan with their buildings and they invited him to try their food. The protagonist raised his palms up. According to the system notification, a task was completed, according to which the protagonist needed to be friendly and help a weak mushroom clan. Reward received, 50 jungle points. In the spider's lair, he was accosted by a female monster spider, who seemed to want to do something wrong. A huge spider stands behind the protagonist, 
who is bound by a web. A system notification appears indicating that a task has been completed, according to which the protagonist must increase his reputation. Reward received, 100 jungle points. Ling Tian protected the bird's eggs on a rock, fighting off a poisonous snake while being pecked on the head by a newly hatched buzzard chick. A system notification appears informing you that the task has been completed. The protagonist lies on the ground and presses his finger on the red window of the system. He says that he finally got 700 points, he can unlock the skill. He says he has the option to add poison, stealth or flight, and then wonders which would be better. According to the system window that appears, the protagonist has three general C rank skills. Add poison for 400 jungle points, adds poison to the attack. Stealth for 600 jungle points, become invisible by taking advantage of your surroundings. Flight for 600 jungle points, grow wings and fly at high speed. The protagonist exclaims that he has received a new task. He looks out the red window of the system with a serious expression on his face. The system window contains information about the Protect the Jungle task. Additional task, hunting for strangers. According to the task description, you need to drive the human race out of the jungle in order to show your power as the ruler of the jungle. Number of tasks, 10. Reward, 1000 jungle points. Rewards will be issued according to the volume completed. Reward for complete completion, activation of the store function. The protagonist presses his finger on the system window and says that he has a task to hunt strangers. He gets an animal helmet and says that the store function is very important and then jungle points can be spent not only on skills. He adds that now he has decided to follow the path of the monster and eradicate everything human in himself. Clouds hover around the mountain. Someone hit the goblin on the head with a morning star. A brown-haired man with a morning star puts his foot on the goblin's head and says that they are in the territory of Alina's butterfly elves and then notes that it is not as scary as they say. A gray-haired guy, accompanied by three other people, says that this is just the entrance to a labyrinth and you can enter their territory only by reaching the center of the valley and receiving a secret key. The brown-haired guy laughs with a big smile and says, Fern World. There are many blue lights floating near the twisted tree. A gray-haired man with a smile on his face says that in an advertisement on the forum it was said that if you open the path to the valley and get the secret key, you will receive a great reward. The brown-haired man says he thought it would be difficult, then says he didn't expect there to be only a couple of low-level monsters here. He adds that this time they will be able to get a lot of things. An arrow flies towards them. The arrow hits the brown-haired guy in the head. Blood pours onto the head of the gray-haired guy. There are three goblins standing on top of the cliff, one of which is armed with a bow. There are many goblins standing on the rocks. The gray-haired guy shouts that there are too many of them. Another person shouts that these are goblins and they need to defend themselves. Goblins jump off the cliffs. Goblins inspect people's corpses and take their belongings. A huge amount of flame appears around the goblins. Someone used the underworld fire dance skill. Someone is holding a staff in his hand. The goblins are hit by magical flames. Someone stood on top of the cliff. The girl with the staff is a level 12 mage named Sarah. The man with the axe in his hand says that posting the quest with a reward on the forum worked and thanks to this they finally killed all these goblins. His name is Luo Feng and he is a level 15 berserker. The black haired man with a quiver on his back is a level 13 Seng Jai archer. Luo Feng says that a couple of amateur teams tried to take on this S class task. He adds that they deserve to be used as bait. The brown-haired man raises his hand and invites everyone else to get rid of these disgusting monsters. To his right, an archer draws the string of his weapon. He releases the arrow, making a shot. The arrow flies into the sky. The archer used the breaking arrow skill, due to which the projectile is divided into several golden clots of energy that fly towards the monsters. Luo Feng and the rest of the people go down to the monsters. They fight monsters inside a circle of fire. The man with the axe says that using newbies as bait is a great strategy, but there is one catch. Stealth allows you to hide using your surroundings. The translucent silhouette of the protagonist sits on a tree branch. The protagonist smiles and says that unfortunately, he is already too much like a monster to go to human cities, otherwise it would be much easier to exterminate strangers. The protagonist carefully observes the people from below and says that, however, it is not in his style to attack the innocent. Seng Jai holds the goblin by the head and puts the sword to his torso. The rest of the team smiles next to him. The black-haired man cut the goblin and his blood spilled. The protagonist says that, however, the guys from the second team did the same with the adventurers of the same company. He adds that this is a huge sacrifice for the sake of resources. The protagonist remembers how he and the blonde man watched as a wounded man was transported. 
Liu Dailong crossed his arms and said that this person had non-life-threatening injuries due to an accident during the adventure. The main character tells the blonde what he thinks, he knows who he hired, and then says that they are all bandits. He adds that they went to the jungle to escape punishment for their crimes, and Liu Dailong gathered them into a detachment for the expedition. The blonde smiles maliciously, he leaves and waves to the protagonist, and then tells him that exploring the jungle is dangerous and someone like him, sitting in an office at a computer, cannot understand this. He tells the protagonist that if he believes that they are criminals, then he should call the police. In the present, the protagonist says with a smile on his face that they are a bunch of villains who participated in the siege and suppression, so he will not be bothered if he has to kill them, but they still have a big difference in strength. The players from the scoundrel team smile smugly. The protagonist says that the team consists of the group leader, Luo Feng, a level 15 berserker, an archer Yin Jai and a magician Sarah, level 13. He adds that they have others in their team, all around level 10 and all of them are criminals who will kill without thinking twice. The protagonist watches the team of people and says that for the last few days he has been following the fastest strategy for raising the level, but he is still only at the 10th level. He adds that based on the fact that the will of the monster is out of the question, he is still a little afraid of dealing with so many people. The protagonist gets to his feet and says that fortunately, he earned jungle points from past missions and unlocked the stealth function, so he can sneak behind them and gradually plan everything out. He adds that he was also given more jungle points for past tasks. The protagonist with a smile on his face says that the rest of the battle depends on him. A mushroom with arms and legs, as well as a joyful face, jumps up next to the protagonist and shouts, Mushroom, Mushroom. A bird flies over the ruins. Sarah asks the blue-haired guy how he is doing. A blue glow comes from the blue-haired guy's eyes and he says that 60% of the area is in fog and his spirit pet can hardly see anything. Luo Feng sits on the down goblin and tells the blue-haired guy to calm down and study the fog. The blue-haired guy says that if her spirit pet gets close to the valley, then monsters might get him. The leader of the group crushes the goblin and tells the blue-haired guy that his job is to find the way, and if she can't do it, then they don't need to hold her anymore. An arrow flies out of the fog. The arrow hits the bird in the eye. The blue-haired guy is holding his eye with his hand, and blood is pouring from her mouth. Luo Feng with a menacing expression on his face and a glowing red eye asks the blue-haired guy if he succeeded. The blue-haired guy wipes his face and says that she saw the valley. The berserker stands in front of the entire group, raises his axe above him and shouts, Okay, let's move out. A group of people enters the cave and the berserker asks if they really went that way. They see monster poop in front of them. Group members cover their noses. The blonde man in blue and gold armor asks if this is monster poop. Sarah exclaims that this is disgusting. The group moves forward and the leader says that this has never happened before and the road was clear. Sang Jai props up his chin and says that they seem to be fresh, Someone must have passed by recently. Sarah says that apparently there is no point in going down this road and it is better to find another. Luo Feng with a worried look on his face says no, if the jungle monster specifically wants them to take another road, then the other path will be more dangerous, so they will take this one. The berserker points his finger forward and commands to clear the road. The protagonist watches them and wonders if they really want to pass and if the obstacle is not too obvious. He gets up from his seat with a mushroom on his shoulder and says that he doesn't care, they can wait. He adds that he is moving on to plan B. The main character says that a clan of mushrooms lives throughout the jungle, and they may seem harmless, but are actually very useful in the jungle. Two joyful mushrooms raise their hands up while another one lies on the ground. The protagonist says that their growth skill allows them to move freely underground and help him explore the area. The mushroom moves underground. The protagonist thought that in order to become more popular with mushrooms, he ate food prepared with them. He remembers eating from the table with tears in his eyes. The protagonist hides around the corner and covers his face. He says that in the end they became good friends with the Mushroom King and now he is helped by dozens of mushroom tribes, including the communication mushroom on his shoulder. A large mushroom poops next to the protagonist. The mushroom on the protagonist's shoulder is a cleansing mushroom. Function, purifies the air and eliminates odors. The big mushroom is a stinky mushroom that is capable of emitting dirt, and other odors. The protagonist and the mushroom on his shoulder smile maliciously. 
the main character says that the time has come for a real battle, and then adds that the hunt begins. There are seven mushrooms with brown golden caps on a steep cliff. Excitement mushroom emits a pungent odor that drives monsters crazy. The pink scent heads towards the sleeping spectral wolves. Spectral wolves emerge from the shadows. A group of people leaves the cave. One of the group members exclaims that they have finally passed. Luo Feng says stop complaining, because according to the map, after this zone they will be safe. The blonde man with stubble puts his hand forward. He sees fire behind the Custavi and shouts that this is impossible. He runs towards the group and shouts that there are monsters there. The berserker makes an axe attack against the spectral wolf. A man with a shoulder pad on his bare torso shouts not to worry, because these are just a couple of low-level monsters and they are just getting into trouble. Someone from the group shouts that they are there too. Spectral wolves surround the group on all sides. The wolves move closer and closer to the group members. Someone from the group wonders why they are all running here. Liu Feng attacks one of the spectral wolves. He clenched his teeth and exclaimed that it couldn't be, someone was planning something against them. He orders a retreat. The group members take off running. Wolves and skeletons attacked people. Pink smoke emanates from the shoots on the mushroom caps. The mushroom jumps to the ground. The smoke from his hat envelops skeletons and wolves. One of the people standing near the mushroom asks if the monsters have left. A blonde man in blue and gold armor says that they are finally saved. The protagonist asks people if they remember him. A dark silhouette is visible in the smoke. The protagonist smiles maliciously and removes the transparent mask from his face. He took off his mask and said that his name was Ling Tian. The surviving people shout that it is Ling Tian. People from the group are scared, and a brown-haired guy in a black cloak tells the protagonist that they did not want to kill him and that the company told them to do so. The protagonist rests his chin and notes that the group members want to say that they were just doing their jobs. The brown-haired man with a serious expression thought that this was their chance. The knights run towards the protagonist and the guy in the black cloak shouts, Get lost, monster. The protagonist steps aside and says that this is not just about work. The protagonist attacks all the villains in front of him with lightning speed. He smiles and says that now this is a personal insult. A red system notification appears, which says that the task of hunting for strangers is 40% completed. Reward received, 400 jungle points. The protagonist looks at the players he defeated and says that he thought that he would not dare to kill people. But, apparently, he was mistaken. Ling Tian's level is currently 11. His head becomes human again and he says that he no longer feels like he belongs to the human race. The protagonist clicks on the system window and says that the rewards for stage 1 of completing tasks are exactly 400 points. He is angry that he is only 100 points short of unlocking flight. With a smile on his face, he tells the mushroom on his shoulder that he did a great job because he not only exposed them but also separated them. The protagonist walks towards the exit and invites the mushroom to return to the forest of dark stone and then adds that the goblin general is a difficult type. The main character says that they are moving to plan C, drive away the tiger and eat the wolf. Red distortions of the system appear with the inscription Darkstone Forest. Many rocks are located in the middle of the forest. The goblin runs to the entrance covered with fabric and shouts to the general that he is starting a report. A huge goblin sits on a throne, and next to him are two female goblins. The goblin speaker says that many bald monkeys came, killed all the brothers outside the valley and broke into it. He adds that the damned bald monkeys have again come to Alina's clan of butterfly elves. The goblin leader takes a large bone in his hand. He gets up from the throne and says that the king's plan is not completed yet, so they cannot be allowed to get close to the eucalyptus tree. He raises his hand with the bone up and heads towards the exit, and then shouts to follow him and says that they will kill outsiders. A blue-haired guy sits on the ground in front of the group. The man with the axe tells the blue-haired guy that the reason the team took so much damage is because of his poor intelligence. The blue-haired guy holds his head and cries. He says that he drew the map correctly, and then says that something is wrong here and those monsters had a well-thought-out plan. Luo Feng, with an angry expression on his face, tells the blue-haired guy to knock it off, and then says that he said that he doesn't want trash on the team. He adds that it's time to pay for his mistakes. Sarah calls the captain. She holds the group leader's hand and asks him to let the blue-haired guy go, because this is his first mistake and she only has one younger brother. The leader of the group asks the girl, should I let go? He tells the blue-haired guy that if it weren't for the murders his sister did for the team, he would have gouged out his eyes. The blue-haired guy bows to the berserker and thanks him. Luo Feng goes with Sarah to the tents and says that they will spend the night here. He invites the others to take a break and recuperate so they can hit the road tomorrow. 
One of the group members says that it is undoubtedly his fault, but he blames it on them. He adds that he really deserves to be a leader. Another member of the group laughs and says that the scoundrel Sarah is returning tonight. The berserker hugs the girl and takes her with him. One of the group members tells the others to stop talking, because the captain is still here. Sang Jai sits on a box with a dissatisfied expression and wipes his bow with a rag. He clenched his teeth and said, that's the problem. The main character looks out from behind a rock and watches the group. He says that he remembers reading information about them and the company, and then adds that the archer Sang Jai and the sorceress Sarah were a couple. The protagonist lies on a rock and says that it looks like he committed a crime and hid in the jungle. He says that after the jungle fell under the control of the technology company Shenchuan, the opportunity to promote the jungle law was lost, resulting in most of the major players in apocalypse survival being criminals unable to survive in the outside world. Men with malicious expressions on their faces stand near the portal. The protagonist says that the law of the jungle is even more cruel in this jungle. He puts his finger on his chin and says that this guy is pretty pathetic for agreeing to being cheated on. Sang Jai pours poison on the arrow with an angry expression. The main character asks why not help him. The full moon rises in the sky above the rocks. Several people are sitting around the fire and drinking drinks from glasses. A black-haired man in a raincoat with a smile on his face says that the captain is not moving fast enough, and there seems to be something wrong with him. The man in the green cloak moves his hand to the side and laughs, and then tells the man in the black cloak that he better not tell the captain about Sarah's figure. One of the men around the fire asks where Sang Yi is, and then adds that it seems like he won't be able to sleep again tonight. Purple smoke from mushrooms envelops Sang Jai, who is lying on a bed. Beads of sweat run down the archer's face. He imagines Luo Feng and Sarah kissing. He imagines Sarah's flushed face. The mushroom with the orange and white cap is a sound mushroom that amplifies sounds. The mushroom with the black and purple cap is a psychedelic mushroom that spreads a fog that makes it difficult to distinguish between reality and illusion. Sang Jai gets up. The main character with a smile on his face says that psychedelic mushrooms erase the boundaries of reality and illusions, and some unpleasant memories can become deeper. He adds that it can make people do things they wouldn't dare do in a sober mind. Members of a group of people are having lunch around two fires. The main character sees smoke in the distance and says that the goblin army is almost here. He says that these monsters are too stupid, because even after they were shown the way, they are still very slow. The goblin leader leads the regular goblins. The protagonist imagines people starting to fight goblins, and then says that when all the participants begin to fight to the death, he will come out of the shadows and kill them all in one fell swoop. He says with a smile on his face that this is perfect, and then says, Go, scoundrel, go in there and kill them all. Two knights watch the archer. One of them says that the captain has gone somewhere, and the other says that he cannot object to the captain. Sang Dizi clenched his bow tightly, and dark red energy emanated from the tent. It was as if lightning flashed in front of him and he screamed and asked what was wrong with him. Sweat is dripping down his face and he wonders how he could even think of this, because it would have killed him. The main character, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, asks if the toxin has stopped working. He props up his chin and says that this guy's energy is quite strong. Luo Feng is lying in bed with Sarah and holding a cigar in one hand. He says that Seng Jai dared to show only a little bit of a deadly aura, and then adds that he is such a brat. The sorceress tells the berserker that he is, after all, her ex-boyfriend, and then asks him not to create trouble for him. Berserker tells the girl not to worry, because he is a capable guy and therefore he will not do anything until he leaves him. The girl looks at the scar and asks the berserker if it still hasn't healed. Luo Feng replies that the scars received from abilities with enchantments are not easy to heal. The girl with a thoughtful look says that the company organized a siege operation, and if not for the berserker, she would probably have died in this battle. The group leader says that it is no wonder that Seng Jai ran away in fear, because that guy, Ling Tian, was so scary. He adds that in one battle he showed the martial arts of a warrior, the abilities of a magician and the dexterity of an assassin. He remembers how the protagonist attacked him with a spear. Berserker says that the main character is the only professional warrior in all of humanity. With an angry expression on his face, he says that the protagonist was holding on to the company, pretending to be a weakling. He adds that they were the only ones left in the battle of seven teams and it was terrible. Luo Feng says that it is fortunate that he died in the jungle, otherwise he would have been their worst opponent. Moonlight breaks through the trees. The protagonist looks at the archer and says that this guy really left the team and ran away. She wonders if he ran away because he wanted to kill Luo Feng and was afraid of his revenge then says that if he is so cowardly, 
then it is no wonder he is being cheated on. The protagonist puts his foot forward and says that in any case, the plan to get rid of all three parties has failed, and the goblin army is already approaching the camp. He adds that he will probably leave this side to them. The protagonist sees the archer through the blue interface and says that if they can take this guy to themselves, this operation will be considered a success. One of the group members shouts that this is an enemy attack. His voice is heard near the rocks. The berserker realizes the body from the bed and screams and asks what is happening. He and Sarah leave the tent and see the goblins fighting the knights. The berserker attacks the goblin with a cutting blow from an axe and shouts asking what happened and why the camp's defense did not warn them and whether it was really destroyed by the goblins. Level 2 mushrooms produce blue crystals from the ground. Low-level crystals are used to create camp defenses. Luo Feng, with a menacing expression on his face, shouts and asks how can something as stupid as a goblin think about removing his defenses before attacking. The goblin leader runs towards the berserker and shouts in goblin, out of the way. He swings a bone club at the leader of a group of people and calls his enemies bald monkeys. The berserker swings his axe at the goblin. The axe and the club clashed in battle. Luo Feng, with a divided expression on his face, calls the goblin strong and then says that he is not at all suitable for his opponent. The goblin leader swings his club again. The berserker runs away from the monster and shouts asking where the archers are and then commands them to take formation. A brown-haired man wearing golden shoulder pads fights a goblin and shouts that Captain Seng Jai has left the team. The goblin leader runs to the berserker, who shouts and asks how dare they run away from the team and clicks on the archer in the blue window of the system. The archer with a dissatisfied expression on his face says that the camp was attacked too early and he had nothing to do with it. He looks at the massive smoke in the distance and exclaims, burn those worms to the ground. The protagonist stands on the branch of a tree and watches the archer. He says his level is still a little higher. A level 13 archer with a wary gaze uses the passive skill sharpness. He exclaims, monster. The archer holds his weapon at the ready. He turns and says, over there. He places an explosive arrow on his bow and draws back the string. He shot at the wooden effigy and pierced its head. He looks at the scarecrow and shouts that it is a deception. The protagonist used the instant attack skill and appeared behind the archer. He swings his hand with a blade at him. The archer clenches his teeth and turns around. Sang Jai blocks the protagonist's bow attack. With a wary look, he tells the protagonist that he distracted him at a distance in order to ambush him. The archer makes a horizontal strike with his bow at the protagonist. The archer pushes off the ground with his foot. He hits the main character, but he blocks the attack with his bladed hand. The archer shouts that he has the agility of an assassin. The protagonist spreads his wings and rises into the air. He flies away from the enemy and lands on the ground. He uses the stealth ability, after which his body becomes translucent. The archer looks around and wonders if he has disappeared and if he can use this skill to continue pursuing him. He draws the bowstring, after which his arrow glows due to the use of the light spell. He asks if it is human or monster, and then asks the protagonist to show his true colors. Sang Jai shoots his bow forward. The main character catches his enemy's arrow. He breaks the arrow and, with a smile on his face, asks if his stealth is no longer effective, and then tells the enemy that he still doesn't have a chance. The archer pulls the bowstring and tells the protagonist that he is unworthy of him. There is concern on his face. Fog poisonous mushrooms, capable of releasing mild toxins, enter the body through the respiratory tract. The toxin is usually broken down by the body, but during intense physical activity it can explode inside the body. Mushrooms with green caps emit green smoke. The archer rests his hand on the ground and exclaims that it is a toxic gas, and then adds that the toxin is very weak and not lethal. Seng Jai gritted his teeth and thought that he had an antidote, but it would be better for him to leave everything as it is to take advantage of the situation. The main character smiles and says that the archer still retains his sanity, and then says that he is truly worthy of the place of the elite leader of the team. He adds that the guy may not expect him to fight him fairly. A smiling mushroom with an orange cap appears near the protagonist. Mushrooms with red and brown caps appear nearby. Seng Jai sees many walking mushrooms of different sizes appear around the protagonist. He screams loudly out of fear. Many clots of energy and spikes are directed at the villain, who screams in pain. In place of the archer, only a puddle of acid remains. The protagonist gives the mushroom a thumbs up and with a smile on his face tells him that it was a great job. The main character lunges forward and exclaims that now they can finish him off. Several arrows are aimed at the protagonist. Arrows fly at the protagonist from the direction where the puddle of acid was. Sang Jai restores many health units and draws the bowstring. 
with a swollen face, he shouts to the protagonist that he will destroy him, and then calls the monsters. The protagonist dodges the arrows and tells the enemy that even with his advanced antidote supporting him, under the influence of so many toxins, the power and accuracy of his arrows is far from perfect. The main character puts his hand to his face and tells the enemy that the level of his attacks is no longer effective. The archer opens his eyes wide in surprise and tells the protagonist that he is Ling Tian. The main character hits the archer. He looks at the enemy and tells him to rest in peace. A red system notification appears with information about the progress of the mission hunting intruders. 50% completed. Mission reward, 100 jungle points. The main character stands next to the corpse of the archer and looking at the system window says that he raised the level to 12 and received another 100 jungle points as a reward, so he can use them to unlock what he wanted. The protagonist turns his head. He sees a blue magic circle and notices that it is a circle of magical teleportation. The protagonist holds his head with his hand. The tents of a group of people are on fire. The goblin leader strikes with his club. Sarah maintains a barrier over her allies and tells the berserker that Captain Seng Jai is dead. The leader of the group, with a displeased expression on his face, says that it is obvious that someone has wreaked havoc and took the opportunity to kill the separated team member. He adds that everything here is still under his control. The goblin leader swings his club at the barrier. A member of a group of people screams and asks Sarah to teleport them. The girl uses ritual magic, teleportation. Two magic circles appear above the rocks. People teleport along with the barrier. The goblin leader's expression shows confusion. The main character looks at the teleport and asks if it was really a bait to lure him out. Surviving people appear at the sight of the magic circle. The berserker, with concern on his face, shouts that this is a monster and asks how this is possible. The main character smiles smugly while looking at his enemies. A large level 10 monster with blue eyes and horns stands in front of a man with a level 10 spear. In this game, at the same level, monsters are usually a little stronger than people. But compared to monsters, people have one main advantage. They know how to plan, group and set traps. A staff with a red laser emanating from it levitates in front of a girl with gray hair. A lot of people are fighting a big monster. Therefore, humans have the unique advantage of killing monsters 10 levels higher than themselves. A man holds in his hand a ball with energy circulating inside it. The protagonist's eyes glow orange. However, now there is a monster that uses the tactics of humans to hunt them. Luo Feng looks at the protagonist with concern on his face and asks how it is possible for a monster to have the mind of a human. The protagonist's head becomes human and he asks the group leader if he remembers him. The berserker thrusts his axe forward and shouts, You are Ling Tian. One of the people behind him shouts that the protagonist is a monster who destroyed the third and fourth teams. Another member of the group shouts to the protagonist that he is still alive and has turned into a real monster of the jungle. A man in golden armor with a frightened expression on his face shouts that he does not want to die here. Liu Feng yells at the frightened man to stop now. The leader of the group, with concern on his face, shouts to the others not to be afraid of the protagonist and then adds that he does not know what methods he used to get the monster's body, but his level is not that high yet, only 12. The main character rests his chin and thought that there are too many of them and even if all the mushrooms participate in the battle, they may not be able to win and his trump card with the mushrooms will be spent. He adds that with the help of the monster's will, he has a chance to win, but he does not think that this time he will be able to restore his will. Luo Feng gets into a fighting stance and shouts that the protagonist is no longer a human warrior as before, but a weak monster hiding in the shadows and relying on his tricks. He adds that he is sorry that he could not kill the protagonist earlier, but this time he has a magician to immobilize the soul before killing. The main character covers his face with his hand and laughs. He opens his mouth wider and laughs even louder while people look at him. The main character's eye glows red and he says, Will you kill me? Do not make me laugh. He adds that Liu Daelong led seven teams, but still could not defeat him. He asks the enemy if he really thinks that they can do this. Some members of the group become very frightened. One of them shouts that the protagonist will kill them. The leader of the group looks at them and calls them a bunch of scoundrels. He pushes off the ground. He jumped on the protagonist and swings an axe at him, using the combat skill, Cleaving Mountains. He shouts and calls the protagonist a low-level monster. The main character opens a system window. He presses his finger on the inscription skill, Flight. The protagonist quickly flies straight up. People cover their faces because of the wind. The main character flew far into the sky. A system notification appears stating that the protagonist has successfully learned and mastered the flight skill. 
The main character floats above the forest. People look at the main character who has spread his wings. Streams of wind come from the protagonist's wings. He tells his enemies to prepare for imminent death. Mages create magic circles, and archers prepare to shoot from a bow. Arrows and magical energy rush towards the main character. Sarah moves her hand to the side and she shouts, everyone out of the way. She uses dazzling light array magic and a blue magic circle forms in front of her. Blue magic circles appear near the protagonist from which clots of energy emanate. The protagonist thought that with the ability to send spells over such long distances, they truly deserve the title of leader of the mages. The protagonist makes a dash towards the enemies and thought that, however, he was faster. Luo Feng swings his axe. The axe hits the main character. It cuts a little through his body. A little blood flows from the protagonist's mouth and he asks whether a level 15 warrior really has such a terrible throwing skill. Luo Feng and the others look at the protagonist and the group leader is indignant at not being able to catch him. The main character shows the middle finger to the enemy and shouts to him that next time he will definitely kill him. The main character flies into the distance. Luo Feng pulls his hand back and commands to find this scoundrel. The bald man supports the sorceress who can barely stand on her feet and tells the group leader that the teleportation of the leader Sarah will consume a lot of energy and she will not be able to do anything else. He adds that only Captain Seng and their team is able to track an invisible flying target. But he is already dead. The corpse of a man lies on the ground. The leader of the group calls the others a bunch of losers and asks them what good they are. Sarah speaks up to Luo Feng and tells him not to worry, because the protagonist is under the influence of her light array spell. She reports that she can track him with her magical aura on him. A magical mark is visible on the back of the flying protagonist. The protagonist can be seen flying among the trees. He says with a serious expression that he must cross the valley, avoiding hordes of monsters along with goblin guards, before entering the tree kingdom. He adds that the key to the tree kingdom is not a physical object, but an altar under a eucalyptus tree, requiring a large amount of magical power to open it. The altar is surrounded by a blue barrier. The protagonist with a serious expression says that even after several attempts, the company to find the location of the altar failed. So he planned to make Luo Feng and the goblins fight each other to the death in order to reap the benefits, and advance to level 15 before wasting time on his search. He adds that he did not expect that Luo Feng, who seemed like a fool, would be so cunning, because he put a mark on his team members to distinguish them from their opponents. The protagonist flies to the barrier and says that although he was able to escape by unlocking the flight skill, now he will not be able to destroy both sides. The goblin guards will return to the eucalyptus tree, so he will not be able to find the altar. He adds that the magician definitely marked him in that bustle. He says that they marked him and he can use it. The protagonist flies near the barrier and says that if Luo Feng leaves the expedition and returns to report that he is still alive, then he will have problems. The main character, with a serious expression on his face, thought that this was unlikely to happen with the character of this berserker. Rocks rise above the trees. Sarah moves her hand to the side and says that this is very strange. He was definitely dead, and then asks how he turned into a monster and survived. Many people stand near the group leader sitting on a felled tree. The man in the green shirt says that he needs to leave the expedition and immediately report his location. The black-haired guy says that let the company deal with it, they won't be able to handle him. One of the group members shouts that he is the devil, who knows what other trump cards he has up his sleeve. Another group member says that he barely survived the last time and does not want to fight him again. The berserker's face is covered by a shadow and he thought, report to Liu Daolong. He imagines the image of a blonde man in front of him who tells him that strength is the basis of the law of the jungle, the price of continued existence, so if you want to survive, you need to prove that you are worthy of it. The berserker opens his eyes wide and shouts that no, you can't tell Liu Daolong. Sarah tells the group leader that he is so unkempt because she was able to mark him with a spell. She adds that if they report to the company, they will be able to track him. Luo Feng, axe in hand, looks at the girl and tells her not to forget that he designed the entire game system. He adds that the protagonist knows the requirements and skills of all classes, but if they work together, they may be able to finish him off. The berserker leads the group and tells them that once the protagonist has time to come to his senses, they will no longer be able to find him even if they tell Liu Daolong. He adds that if the blonde finds out that they could not deal with the level 12 monster, they will not be left alive. He looks at a tree with a barrier at its top and says that it was also the protagonist who proposed the development of Helen butterflies. He was targeting them and they were just caught in the crossfire. He adds that the protagonist's goal is a eucalyptus tree. 
the berserker clenches his teeth and exclaims that they will definitely meet him again as soon as they find the altar in the eucalyptus tree. The scoundrel with an angry expression on his face begins. Speak, they, at the same time as the smiling protagonist, say, we cannot miss this opportunity. I must kill him in the jungle. A few days later, eucalyptus tree kingdom. The team of people divided into several groups. The man in the green cloak touches the blue crystal and says that the composition of crystals in the northwest corner is laid out. The forming link is completed. Sarah forms a magic circle in front of her, and the team leader and several other people stand next to her. Next to them lies the corpse of a goblin. The sorceress with a serious expression on her face exclaims that the last crystal in the northwestern corner has been installed, and a barrier can be built. She raises her hand up and a blue magic circle appears near her. A beam of blue energy appears in front of the girl. The barrier around the tree is destroyed. A girl with a tired expression on her face can barely stand on her feet and says that the barrier has been installed. So even if the protagonist is able to fly and be invisible, he cannot get out of this zone. However, the magical aura from the mark on him is weakening more and more and it is more difficult to catch him. The berserker holds the girl by the shoulder and arm so that she doesn't fall, and then says that this is just the last shot and with his current strength there is a chance that he will continue to cause problems. But if they find him, he will no longer be able to do anything. He looks at the barrier and says that the boundaries are so big, and then adds that Ling Tian and the Tree Realm Altar are here and if they find it, he will never escape. The main character stands on the branch of a tree. He is hiding behind a tree with a mushroom on his shoulder and thought that he has been fighting these guys using guerrilla warfare tactics for several days now, but still has not found the altar. The berserker cuts off the head of one of the many goblins. The protagonist says that with the help of mushrooms, he studied the distribution of monsters in the valley pretended to be human and attacked monster camps, provoking fights between Liuofeng monsters and others. One of the goblins points his index finger at the people who attacked them. The protagonist says that with pet spirit masters tracking the goblin squad's movements, mages providing healing, and warrior archers clearing the battlefield, you can be sure that they form a fully armed brave team that is virtually invincible in the jungle. People with weapons at the ready are preparing for battle. Liu Feng sits on a mountain of defeated goblins. The protagonist says that as long as they have not encountered the goblin general, they can clear the valley of monsters, because after all, the upper limit of the levels of local monsters is not very high. The protagonist rests his chin and thought that when they defeat the goblins and monsters of the jungle, the magicians will install magical barriers, narrowing the area around the eucalyptus tree. He adds that fortunately, this spiritual tree can disguise the magic mark, and then says that even though he has raised the level to 13, he cannot do anything against them. A drop of sweat runs down the protagonist's cheek. He mentally asks the mushroom on his shoulder if he has found the altar, and then adds that there is very little left. He thought that with the mushroom clan's sensitivity to the spiritual power of the earth's veins, this should be possible. A mushroom with a joyful face raises its hand up. The main character, with a smile on his face, picks up the mushroom and asks him if he found it, and then adds that then the time has come for the decisive battle. Sarah puts her hands forward with a joyful face and exclaims, Here he is. Near the team of people lie the corpses of goblins. The berserker with an axe in his hand shouts that they need to go far and the protagonist must have found the entrance to the kingdom of trees. Luo Feng runs with the rest of the group and exclaims that this time they must kill him. The main character flies and says that of course they found him, and then adds that taking all this into account, this will be the last battle. The protagonist emits crackling energy with a joyful expression on his face and exclaims, let's rock the jungle. Mobilization of jungle monsters. Many small mushrooms appear. The large black mushroom is enveloped in pink smoke. Spectral wolves and skeletons run towards enemies. Lianas hang from the trees. Monsters are watching the team of people from the shadows. The berserker shouts to the others to narrow the barrier and drive him to the eucalyptus tree, because this time they must kill the protagonist. He adds that the monsters in the jungle seem to have come to life. A bear, wolves and skeletons run towards a group of people. The berserker exclaims that the protagonist has used them again. He looks to the side and shouts to the left and right units to hold off the monsters, and commands the rest to run forward. The team members accept the order and the two men begin to fight the monsters. Sarah materializes a holographic radar above her hand and tells the team leader that it seems that the protagonist knew that this time he could not escape, so he raised all the monsters in the jungle. Berserker asks if he can control them. The girl replies that managing is too strong a word. Most of the time he is trying to lure them into the territory of monsters. Berserker replies that it looks like he's currently using some kind of toxin to make the monsters go crazy. 
He imagines the protagonist smiling and says that so far he has only shown ordinary human tactics, no better than a level 12 monster, so there is nothing to worry about. Warriors fight the protagonist's monsters. The wooden branch is destroyed. The berserker shouts that here he is. Liu Feng gritted his teeth and said that apparently this is his main trump card. The boss of the Labyrinth Valley, the Goblin General. A huge, muscular goblin stands opposite the leader of the human team. A man with an axe runs towards the enemy and exclaims that he will kill him and see what the main character still has. The rest of the group watches the fight. The black-haired man invites Sarah to help the commander. The other man replies that it is not necessary, the monster is not strong enough to command. The sorceress materializes a radar above her hand and says that there are more important enemies. He is very close. She, along with two other fighters, begins to run and exclaims that Ling Tian is right ahead. She thought that she would take revenge for Liu Feng. The altar is closed by a blue barrier. The protagonist flies up to the altar and says that it is not surprising that he could not find it even after so many searches. He adds that the eucalyptus tree was a cover. The main character clenches his hand and puts it in front of him. He sees a glowing blue ball in front of him and says that fortunately, he has learned to read and write in the jungle. He says that he is sure that at the entrance to the kingdom of trees there is a magical altar, like the legendary stone slab. The protagonist asks the mushroom that raises its hand if they are really here. The protagonist dodges several fiery bolts of energy. The protagonist sits down on the magic circle. He noticed something. He gets to his feet and looks at the magic circle, and then says that combining attack and closing magic is very talented. Someone from the Mago turns to Sarah. The man with the staff tells the girl that the confinement technique has successfully captured the target. A man with a magic ball in his hand says that gravity has been created. The sorceress with a serious expression on her face tells the protagonist that he cannot leave. The main character, who is enveloped in magical energy, stands opposite people and says that the magic of double fettering, limiting flight and agility is a surefire way to deal with it. The main character smiles and tells the enemies that, however, they should make sure that he doesn't get out. Sarah puts her hand with her staff forward and thought that she doesn't need to be afraid, because the protagonist is no longer a professional warrior, but only a level 13 monster. She tells the protagonist to stop talking and informs him that he is surrounded. The girl materializes a flash of light in front of her and tells the protagonist that she will see what he can do to save himself. A destructive ray emanates from the girl's hands because she used magic, explosive flash. The beam hits the protagonist directly. The main character smiles smugly. A bone falls to the ground. Notifications appear about defeating the goblin general with a reward of 1000 experience points. The second notification says about getting character level 16. Behind Luo Feng lies a defeated goblin. The man receives a notification that he can now change classes. With a serious expression on his face, he says that he cannot believe that he has reached level 16, but before changing classes, he needs to collect excellent materials. The goblin's body behind him disappears. He says that his current cuteness is not enough to deal with Ling Tian. Berserker asks one of his subordinates where Sarah is. Luo Feng turns his head and exclaims, what a disaster. The protagonist with a gloomy look shouts at them that this magic is not strong enough. The protagonist exclaims that it needs to be stronger. Sarah puts her hand forward and notices that in front of them is a magical altar, which is the entrance to the kingdom of trees, and then says that the protagonist wants to use it to absorb their magic in order to block blows. She adds that the protagonist is so naive for thinking that he will succeed. The protagonist spreads his arms to the sides and black distortions appear behind him against the background of a blue magical pattern with a tree. He shouts that of course, that's not all. The protagonist points a finger at himself and tells the girl that he is going to suck all the magical powers out of her. The distortion increases and a golden glow appears in the middle of it. Sarah screams and asks how this is possible, since the protagonist is not even a magician, and then asks him how he casts spells. The group of people are running through the forest. They stop and the berserker shouts that the barrier is dissipating and they will not be able to catch it. A large stream of blue energy appears. Luo Feng gritted his teeth and said that they couldn't let him escape again. People stand near a partially destroyed stone with symbols written on it. The protagonist says that for warrior people there are 24 classes and 72 paths after his change. Their skills vary. He says that this is the science of the jungle, developed by Shenchuan technology to transform the jungle using the stone slab they cracked here and he was responsible for this process. The main character spreads his arms to the sides and remembers his human image, and then says that while he was still a man, 
he could use a stone slab to realize his status as a professional warrior. Streams of energy are directed towards the protagonist. He says that now he is a monster, so he can no longer use his warrior skills. With a smile on his face, he tells the girl that, however, she should not forget that he himself developed all the classes and by changing a few symbols in her magical barrier, you can use the altar to draw magical power out of her. The protagonist imagines mushroom monsters hitting large nails with hammers, destroying the crystal. Sarah's staff falls to the floor. A man with black hair turns to the sorceress with concern on his face. Sarah falls to her knees and exclaims that her strength is gone. The main character with a smile on his face tells people that initially he wanted them to kill each other, and he slowly got here after that. But their persistence gave him inspiration. The protagonist approaches the weakened people and tells them that maybe he could use them to open the kingdom of trees, and then reports that luckily, this time they went right after him. He adds that if they went after Luo Feng, he would have no choice but to enter the tree kingdom first and then figure out how to deal with them. Sarah, with an angry expression on her face, shouts at the protagonist not to get carried away, because neither the commander nor the company will let him go. The two men near her look scared. The black-haired man shouts that it's all the berserkers' fault and the company forced them. The man in brown clothes asks Ling Tian to let them go, and then says that they promise not to do this again. An orange glow emanates from the protagonist's eyes and he says that undoubtedly they will not look for him, but he will gradually find them all himself. Luo Feng runs through the forest with several people and with a menacing expression on his face says that he does not care even if the barrier has dissipated, because Sarah and the others will definitely hold him back. He adds that there should be no problems with the abilities of a squad of magicians. The leader of the group runs up to the stone and thickets, and then says that the protagonist is here and he cannot leave. A group member behind the commander tells him that he is moving so quietly. The berserker looks at the protagonist and thought it was incredible. The protagonist smiles and asks the villain if he has finally come. The protagonist sitting on the altar tells the berserker that he is the last dish at their feast. Between the protagonist and members of the group of people lie the corpses of magicians. One of the group members shouts to the protagonist that Sarah is dead. Another group member shouts that he thought it was just a level 12 monster. The protagonist takes off and with a smile on his face tells his enemies to relax because he will not deprive anyone. Some members of the group look scared. The two guys start to run away. The main character flies between them with lightning speed and cuts them with his blade. He pushes off the ground. He swings the blade at the bald man. Liu Feng cuts the bald man from the back. The main character makes a surprised expression on his face. He stops and asks the berserker what the hell he is doing. Between the protagonist and the group leader lies the corpse of a bald man. The main character asks the enemy if he is really taking his anger out on his own people. Liu Feng pulls his axe back and exclaims that these cowards have lost their zeal to fight and therefore there is no need to leave them alive. The main character, with a malicious smile, asks the enemy if that's why he decided to kill them himself, and then tells him that he made the task easier for him. A bright blue glow appears behind the protagonist and he exclaims, Damn, my jungle dot. Luo Feng with an angry expression shouts at Ling Tian that he admits that he underestimated him before. A glow emanates from the protagonist's eye and he asks the enemy if he shouldn't now run away with his tail between his legs. A blue-violet sphere appears behind the berserker and the protagonist tells him that the kingdom of trees is open. There are no people holding him back, so he better run. With a smug expression on his face, he tells the villain that there is no need to provoke him, because he is still here only because he was waiting for him, and then adds that after using so many tricks, it is time to prove his strength. He informs the enemy that, after all, strength is the first law of survival in the jungle, after which he makes a dash towards the enemy. 